Alrighty. So hi guys, my name is Michael Libro. I am a senior Dudley grad student at Case, and today we're going to be talking about LT Spice and circuit simulation. Um, so we're, as I said, we're going to be focusing on LT Spice. So if you turn your attention to the screen, you to get LT Spice, you want to go to this website, which is Google LT Spice. It's the first thing that comes up, and you want to download and you want to download it. It's not too big of a file; it shouldn't take you too long. And how's it looking? Good. Okay. So. The first thing you should you should know, you should know when you open up LT Spice is this blank, rather drab window. Is where's the help? Help topics. So this will be your friend. Uh, whenever you forget what I said or you want to look up things that you know I didn't say, because I'm definitely not covering everything. Because Spice can do a lot of stuff. Um, you'll you'll find it here. So if I want to if I want to search, and this, I may use it as a search. If I want to search, you know, this I, I found some reference to back. I know I don't know what is that. Um, I can look it up and do a little, nice little paragraph on it. So we'll come back to that in a little bit. But the first thing I'm going to do is put up, pop up a new schematic. It's also rather drab. And we're going to start to plot down a, a, a small circuit. So one thing I can do is I can go up and edit. Let's say I want to put down a, resi I want to put down a resistor. And as you'll see, next to all of these guys here, there are quick keys. Please use cookies. It really is going to make your life nice. It's going to make it a lot, going to make it a lot easier. So I want a resistor. I'm going to put it down uh, right there, and then I hit I have hit um, escape to get rid of putting another one down. But I noticed like oh man, this thing is like I want to kind of turn it, but if I like click on it, like nothing happens. You, know, you get really annoyed if you don't know what's going on. So what you can do is we can go back up here, and we can either move or drag it. Um, and we'll, we'll, we'll come to the difference between those two later, but right now it doesn't matter. So I can move it around, so now, now I have access to it again, and I want to, where are you? I want to rotate this guy. So control R to rotate and control E to mirror, so I can rotate this guy, and once I learn my quick keys, I can kind of spin it around a lot of times. So let's click to place it, and I'm gonna put out a capacitor. So B is that, so that Spice uses a lot of intelligent quick keys. What do you guys think the capacitor quick key is? C. C, yay. There you go. Okay, so now I have, I have two components, and I'm just like, all right, so I want to, I want for a voltage source in next. So I can go back up to edit and find, find stuff, or <coughs> I also have this handy little bar up here. I can say, I want to select some kind of component. And let me bring this guy down so we can see it. And I can just type in, voltage and then voltage source will come up. So I can click on this guy and I'm going to say control E to mirror, put, the, put the, my little text over here because I like to be anal and have everything nice and pretty. So I'm going to hook up this guy and if you guys don't recognize this, it is a very simple low pass filter. Now before I put any, now we can Use a lot of. We can put all our values in here and choose whatever we want. So we're gonna we're gonna bypass that in a second. So I want to show you how to deal with LT spice errors. Um, so we're gonna cross them on purpose. And I, if I wanna if I wanna run my circuit, if I wanna actually simulate things, I can look up to this dude over here. The guy looks like he's running. Uh, click on him. So as we notice, there's a lot of different types of simulations I can run. The first one I'm just going to run is uh, is transient. So if I want, if I care about something versus time, I'm going, to, I'm going to choose this guy. So let's just arbitrarily run it from zero to you know 100 milliseconds. And all the all the all the units default to standard SI. So seconds. So it would be seconds, farads, ohms, and things like that. So I'm going to click OK. And notice I get an error. It says can't find definition of model R. So what that means is I have a look right here. We'll click cancel. Cancel. It means that I I didn't add a value for R. So I'm going to add something. I'm going to right click on R and say this guy is 10k, just for kicks and giggles. And let's just make this guy 0.1. And I'm going to make this guy microfarads. So for this I can just put U for micro. It uses standard. It uses standard SI abbreviations for um, for kilo and micro. So this is so so this guy is times a thousand, or you know <coughs> times ten to the minus six. 
So we said, okay, and then let me do my bolted source as well. So I'm going right, to right click on this guy and mm, let's just say 10 volts for 15 giggles. And I'm going to move this guy over. So let's try again. Let's see if, let's see if we're more successful. Uh -oh. What's going on now? We say, we don't have a path to ground. Oh no. In Spice, just like in real circuits, you must always define, you have to tell it where ground is. It needs to know. So I can come up here and say, I can click ground. I can go edit and find ground in here, ground. Or I can just hit G and get a ground. Now I'm going to put it here and attach it with a wire. So let's try again. So now that I click this guy, you have this, this box that comes up. And you see it's, it's simulating 0 to 100 milliseconds, but it's not actually simulating anything at the moment. So what we have to come down here is we can do two main things. I can do, I can generally simulate voltage or current. So I can look down here, I get a little probe, I can click at any node, and bam, I can get a voltage, which, you know, that, that's, that's what we expect because, you know, this is very, you know, this circuit just for demonstration. Or if you can see this little current probe with an arrow through it, right, I can get current as well. So, but of course, you know, this, this, this guy being a filter, DC really isn't that exciting. So let's use a different source. I, I want something just that's not a DC voltage source. So what I'm going to do for this guy, I'm going to right click on him and go into advanced. And if you look at advanced, there's a lot of different stuff that you can, uh, what's up? Can you set like an initial charge on your capacitor as an initial condition? There are ways to set initial conditions uh, in SPICE. Um, I've never tried to set an initial, I mean, uh, a char as, uh, as initial charge. So with what you just showed us, um, yes. did it start with a capacitor with zero volts across it and then it charged, or did it compute a steady state solution and then show it? What you saw there, what you saw there was a steady state solution because you saw the you saw the output was started at, started at 10. Mm -hmm. If that was actually zero, you would, we would, um, see our capacitor charging up. Well, with the, with the, with the, let's, uh, well, let me, let me look at this guy again. Okay, so with this guy, we say this is, this was 10 volts here, right? If we, initially, if, if we were to uh, step this on from, from zero to 10, what would we'll, we'll, we expect to happen across the cap? Like initially, it would, we'd expect it to short and then charge up. So for this guy, we'd say since this is, we can see this is just ten. Mm -hmm. This guy is starting at this. This guy shifts doing a steady state and then simulating. Um, there are ways to to control that to make it do exactly what you want. So which is a good example of make sure you pay attention to what's going on in your circuit. Don't expect Spice to think for you. That's a, that's a big mistake a lot of people use. They'll spend hours and hours tinkering with their spice model and then they'll build a circuit and I guarantee you it won't work. You want to use spice in order to see how things, you want to see what, what is the trend in this happening or that happening or what is generally going on. You have, in order to actually make spice very realistic, it takes, it takes, a, bit, it takes a bit of effort. It's, it's better to actually understand circuits rather than try to have a computer think for you. But yeah, does that answer? Okay, cool. So another thing, if your circuit kind of gets like astray, it goes over there, and you know you don't like things like that, I can just hit spacebar, and it'll center it nice and pretty for me. So back to not liking it, just a plain DC voltage source. We're going to add something different. So right click, advance, and we have all this stuff we can do. For now, I'm going to choose pulse, which uh, you can, I'm going to set it up to be a square, uh, square wave. You can do some other more tricky stuff with, with it, but this is the basic. So I'm going to go, we're going to go from 1 volt to 5 volts. And I'm going to uh, not set any of these guys. I'm gonna, but I'm going to go set it on to 0 0.005 period to 0 0.01 seconds. And I'm not going to set a number of cycles. Um, a number of cycles is one that you that you may use frequently. Um, if you want a source to go, um, if you, if I, maybe I want you know ten periods and then I want nothing. We can simulate that if we want to. 
So, all right, so we're gonna go this guy, we're gonna do this, and we're gonna test her again. All right, let me get rid of that guy. So again, another thing, if you see these scissors on them, um, if you go and press F5, that, that'll, that'll delete stuff. So, so if I you know, went through and got, went and did a bunch of stuff and my schematic looked all ugly, right? I'm, I'm, so I have five different things on here. I can either go to, I can either go to my, go to my graph, click F5 and start deleting stuff, or I can double click on any node and have it just have that guy being graphed. So again, on the output, we can see this is pretty much what we expect expect from a low pass filter. All of our high frequency content around right, around our sharp peaks are being smoothed out by the capacitor. Do you, anybody have any questions on this up to this point? Or? Okay, so. You know, transit, transit's kind of, you know, that's kind of fun, but um, it gets boring after a while. But sometimes, a lot of times, when we have, especially when we have filters, it's one of the things we really care about is the AC analysis. We really care about, you know, what is my, what is the frequency content at some filter, at this filter at some frequency. So let's change this guy around a little bit. I'm going to go, I'm gonna change this guy. And I'm also going to add a second stage to my filter because I don't want to bore you too much. And I'm going to make a nice little bandpass filter. So in order to hook stuff up in LT Spice, I can go click on the wire or I can press F3 and I can click from one node to the next node. And if I get messed up and, and you know I draw a line out there, I don't want to, I can just hit escape. And I can either delete all these guys, or I could have hit the undo button. Uh, and let me delete these guys. So, all right, so for this guy, I'm gonna go a microfarad, and I'm gonna go 8K. So, if I want to, change my analysis before I was doing a transient. I can right click in this guy, and we're gonna to go to the next one, which is AC analysis. For this guy, I'm gonna sweep uh, by decade. I'm gonna go 100 points per decade is good. If you want more resolution or less, um, you, you can choose to do that. Um, if you have a really intense schematic with you know 100 components, maybe you want less run resolution because your run time will start to hurt you. Um, but depends on what you want to do. So I'm going to start at 1 hertz and go to 1 meg. Um, be careful with LT Spice. With LT Spice, meg is for, you know, is, is for 10 to the 6th, but milli is 10 to the minus 3. So just be careful to make that distinction. Is it not case sensitive? Pardon me? I'm just asking, why, why do you have to write the big M, E, G? If, is it is it just not case sensitive? If you just did a capital M, would it just I, well, I'll I'll do I'll I'll okay. try both I'll try both, and if one fails, we'll find out. All right. That that is the easiest way to tell. Uh, come on. Um, sorry for a second. Let me. Unfortunately, my my display is acting up a little bit. I don't know. A brief timeout. Does anybody have any any other questions during this during this uh, fun little timeout? Okay. So now we have this little pop up window, and if we read it, we can say. The important thing is says no AC stimulus found, and it's, and so this is an error. So it's looking at our voltage source and it's saying, well, you didn't tell us how this guy is supposed to act in an AC in an AC analysis condition. So it says what you want to do is make it set the value of the current or voltage source to AC one, and that and that allows to do our analysis. So I can go back in to my voltage source, right click. 
we said set the AC amplitude to one and run again. So let me go back to this guy and can I, can I ask? Um, yeah, sure. This is a linear circuit, so it doesn't really matter. But um, are you able to set like a DC bias on your uh, AC signal? Like you want it to, if you're building an amplifier, you have to set it to an operating point first. Yeah. Um, do you have to use a separate voltage source for that? Or uh, that's typically, just just typically what I would do. Okay. Yeah. Just to make it um, uh, evident on your circuit that you know there are two things going on. Okay. That's fair. Okay. So in this case, I have some stuff going on. So I'm just going to double click on this node. And for the astute uh, person paying attention, you'll notice that this guy is actually a very crude audio bandpass filter. So I can say, you can say, well, is it now? What what are my? <coughs> you might want to guess. Ask. Well, what are my three dB points? Well, if I can click on my name right here, I can come up with a nice little chart here, and I can say, well, where is, what happens when my magnitude is right around three dB, and this guy is at twenty hertz, which is about the was about the lower ish limit of your hearing. Um, the reason we don't have exactly twenty, well, I can't get it to exactly twenty hertz or to exactly minus three dB, is because you're only simulating a certain number of points. And it just so happened that one of the number of points I, that I simulated on didn't happen to exactly follow on, fall on 20 hertz exactly. And you can move this around if you want exactly 20 hertz um, or increase your resolution a whole bunch. But for the most part, um, if you're trying to get something way too specific in spice, you're doing it wrong. Um, it's because your real circuit is going to be slightly different anyways. So, and let's just check for fun at the other end. And we're right around 20, we're right around 20 kilohertz. So, or if you have a little better, if you have a little better hearing, maybe you're at 22 kilohertz, unless you, you know, listen to too much heavy metal. All right, so for this guy, um, if you notice, um, we'll, we have a solid line, which is our magnitude and it is in dB right here. And we also have a dotted line, which is our phase, and right now this guy is in degrees. Um, and for all of these, you can, you can change them around. We can say, if I left click on them, I can change my range. I can say whether this is decibel, logarithmic, logarithmic or linear. You know, if I want, if maybe I like to look at my graphs in certain, in certain ways, but for, you know, Certain people do, but since this is a Bode plot, I look at things in decimal. Cool. Okay, so let's hop back over to our our actual circuit, which always hides between in one of these tabs up here. So if I'm looking at this guy, let's <coughs> let's just say that well, this is all this is all well and good, but really in in, in simulation, if you if you know anything about spice. You'll have heard the term netlist. Well, what is a netlist? Well, whenever Spice first started, what, what, what we would do is we would draw, we'd draw out our circuit like this on paper, and then we would say, well, I'm going to have this voltage source at some value. It's going to connect between nodes 1 and 2. <coughs> then I'm going to have a resistor, and that's going to go between nodes 2 and 3. And I'd go that, and I'd write type lot out until you know, I had my circuit, and I'd simulate it. And if you had a plotter, you could kind of plot it just like I showed you beforehand. So one thing to notice about LT Spice is that LT Spice, the, one of the reasons I like it is that it's, a, it's just a minimal graphical overface above your netlist. And just to show you that your netlist is still there, we can go into view, and we can view our Spice netlist. So this guy is exactly what, what we were doing. Let's look at it for a little bit. So, right, we, right now we have V1, which is, which is the, the name of your voltage source. Then you say, what is the first node connected to? What is, this, what is the second node connected to? And spice, spice puts zero as whatever you, what, what, LT spice, whenever you define a, a ground, it'll label that node zero. And then this is our, our, our uh, source directive. It's, it's a pulse. You know, and these are our parameters that we define there, and our AC stimulus is one. And if we look around the rest of the rest of these guys, 
right? We have we have our two resist we have our two filters, and we we tell it what type of simulation to run. In this case, it was an AC analysis. So if you notice, a lot of these things will look familiar to you once you look once you use LT Spice. See, this guy is right down on the screen. If you if you see right here, those are exactly the same. LT Spice will put the net the netless commands directly on the schematic for you. So once you start using LT Spice, you will find that you'll be able to look at people's netlists and actually understand what's going on because you you already have seen a lot of the a lot of those commands. And then. Um, back anno is is a is a command that LT Spice put, puts in every in every one of its uh, in every one of its uh, netlists. And if if you guys want to if you guys want to know what what it what it stands for, um, if you're first starting out, I wouldn't worry about it a lot. If you get a little more advanced, as I showed you before, go look in the help file, right? So we can say we can say help. So help and then search for dot back in it, and it'll give you a little paragraph explaining what's going on. So it's a little out of the scope for what we're doing tonight, but um, the help file is your friend. And then also, at the end of every netlist, you're going to need to say end. But what happens if I get a netlist? You know, what happens if someone gives me a netlist and not an LT Spice, you know, a nice little schematic with all my resistor symbols? What do I do? So let's, uh, let's look at it. So I'm going to right click on this guy, and I'm going to edit this as an independent netlist. So, and LT Spice says, well, you're going to have to save it first. If you didn't do that and modified it, would it modify your schematic on screen? Well, let's find out. So am I able to do that? So if I want to say 10K, it's not letting me type. Uh, so if you, so you're, you're not able to do both at the same time. Um, there may be tricky ways to do that, but um, for the mo for the most part, I have I haven't um, I haven't come across a, a, a great need to do that. Um, if you want to, we can figure it out afterwards, though. Okay, so we're gonna edit it as an independent netlist, and I'm just gonna save this guy as a netlist, and I have done this before, so I'm gonna overwrite my old guy and just. And we're going to do I need this guy again? Nope, I'm going to close out of this guy. Just to show that it's not there anymore. So LT Spice doesn't, doesn't have my nice little pretty schematic anymore. But what it does have is this. So I want to simulate it. So I'm going to hit the running man. And I have no little notes to click on. Right? Before, we're like, oh, I want to I, I wanna, I wanna simulate this node or that node. I just click on it. So we need a different way to do it. So if I right click over here, I can add a trace. And we can look at this guy and we can be like, oh man, I have node one, two, three. Well that's you know, that's pretty useless to me as a user. I don't I don't really I mean, you know, I don't instinctively just know which one of these I need. So let's look at our netlist for a second and see if we can figure it out. All right, so we know that if you remember, it was a low pass filter and then a high pass filter, and the and the high pass filter was connected between its its connection is the same node. So this node three is the output of our high, is the output of the uh, band pass filter. So let's go back in, and again, I can either right click and say add trace, or use a little handy quick key control A and select this guy and say, voila, there is my band pass filter frequency response again. So let's just say I wanted to be really nice to someone and someone else had to use this, and I don't really want them to have to say, well, what is what node is my output? So let's edit our let's edit our netlist. We're gonna say, I'm gonna change this guy to out. So now now you know most people would would look at this image and say, oh, node out, that must be my output. <coughs> so I'm gonna try to run this guy again, and we're gonna right click, say add trace, S click voltage output, and there we go. Now there's a lot of other interesting stuff you, that you can do with, with, your, with your add a trace feature. Um, 
So let's just say I wanted to multiply two signals together. I could put, you know, click on V out and maybe I want to divide that guy by V at node one. So I could do that, and I could do a lot of math, and you know, specific math may, don't 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 make sense for 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 what we're doing in the AC analysis. But what I what I can do is I can do a lot of math. I can add, I can I, you know, I can subtract signals depending upon you know. And of course, since we're in the frequency domain, things are going to look really weird it, unless you think about it for a minute. So I can do a lot of math on my signals. Is the point if I want to. You know, if I want to find a transfer function, if I want to, if, you know, if I want to do a variety of a large variety of things, I, I I'm able to. I can use all my basic math functions. So, all right. So this is so so this is our net list. We can we can edit it. We can copy and paste. I can add I could add more filter stages at, at the out if I wanted to, but for now I think that we have. Exhausted its purposes for the for the basic user. All right. So the next thing we want to I want to show you is a little a little more of a, a few a few more ru runtime things that we can do with circuit simulation. So I'm going to hit new schematic. I'm going to let's add a device. And in this case, I'm going to add a BJT. So I'm going to say let's search for an NPN. And oh, there it is. So I'm going to plop this guy down, and I'm just going to make an emitter follower really quick. So resistor there, control R to rotate. I'm going to hit F2 to bring up my components again and search for a voltage source. I'm going to hit control E to mirror this guy, but I'm going to want two voltage sources this time. So next thing I'm going to do is add some grounds. Ground there, ground there, ground there. And now we're going to do the wire. So I have to wire my different nodes together. And is it flicking back and forth on yours too? Yeah, that's, uh, I apologize about that, but nothing we can do at the moment. So let's just go 1K, 1K. I'm just going to make this some boring thing like 3 volts. And we'll power it with 15 volts. So, all right. So, let's just say I want to do something a little different than I had before. Let's say I want to find a, you know, a DC. Let's say I want to find my DC transfer function in the circuit. I'm going to call. And one interesting thing that we can do with with Spice is that I can. Remember, whenever I went into my netlist and I and I changed one of my node three to out. I can do the same thing on my on my actual schematic. <clears throat> we can do I was called a spice directive. So I can actually is it actually it's not a spice directive, sorry about that. It is a net name. So what I want to do is I want to label the net. So instead of being the generic uh, one, two, three, four, five, it'll be whatever I decide to call it. In this case, I'm going to call it E for emitter. And you'll notice I get this little guy hanging out here. And it's going to now, anything attached to this node is now labeled E in Spice. So he said, all right, let me click my running man. And I want, to not, as I said, I want to find, I'm going to use a DC transfer function. So the syntax for this guy is, so transfer function, so I want V, V, and then my, the voltage at node E, and for my source, uh, the syntax for that is a little different. It is V1. So I'm going to see those guys, put those guys down, and hit enter. And as soon as I run, I get this guy up here that says transfer function. So let's look at it a little bit, see if it makes sense. So we say our, our input impedance looking at V1, we say is about 103,000. And if you and if you know something about emitter followers, right? Looking so looking into the base is going to be roughly our emitter resistor times beta, which is if we pretend it's 100, right? That's about 100,000, and another 1k is about you know 101,000. So 
depending upon what this model uses for beta, um, 103,000 seems reasonable to me, you know, within an order of magnitude. And of course, you can, and, and you can do the opposite with the output impedance. So, looking back into our circuit at node E. So, this guy can be useful whenever you have, when you, whenever you have a complicated, you have some complicated filter, and I want to know my DC transfer function. You know, so maybe you want something slightly different. Instead of a transfer function, we also have this thing called a DC operating point, which this guy has no parameters. So we'll see what it does by, just by looking at it. Well, I'll look at this. So this gives us a ton of useful information. Let me bring this guy down here for a second. Can you see that? All right. So what this guy tells us is at, D, at a DC steady state, it gives it, this guy gives us the voltages in, at every node, and it gives us the current everywhere. So I say, and if you notice, some of these will be duplicates. So if I say the current through R2 should be the same as the current going into the, into the base of my NPN, and we say I base for key one, and of course, it is the same because there's there's no junctions there. It's one continuous node. So when I do really complicated circuits, you can be like, let's say maybe I was building a current mirror, and I want to know, you know, is this guy, you know, are my two legs approximately, you know, the right ratio? I can go and put a DC operating point and and look at that. It'll, it'll give you a ton of useful information with very little work. So, let's just say I want to do something a little different. What happens if I were like, well, you know, I have, you know, 10 resistors sitting on my bench, and I may not know much about circuits, but I kind of want to know the general trend for what's going to happen if I change a resistor at my base. And it's going to be really annoying to add in 10 different values and try to simulate it 10 different times. So what if I want to look at that all at once? Well, we can do that. The syntax for that is to take your value, instead of having something like 1K, I'm going to put R in brackets. And these are curly brackets. If, if, uh, and it might be a little hard to see from you know, wherever you are. So now this guy is R. And I'm going to simulate a transient this time. And I'm just arbitrarily picking my time from 0 to 0 0.1. Um, you can do whatever you want. So let's try to simulate this guy. And can't find definition of model R. Well, that makes sense because I haven't really told I haven't, I haven't told the simulator you know, what value to put there. I just said it's R. So in this case, this is where I'm going to need the spice directive. That I, that I mentioned earlier. So you can look up the syntax for this uh, in, the, in, the help, in the LT Spice. In fact, we'll do that right now. Let's say, let's say I remember someone talking about this before and they said it was called step. Or, <coughs> well, that's not it. Uh, steps down here. Or, that's when you get to the top. That's step. Brand say by step yeah. parameter suite. There we go, right? So. Uh, no, down two from there. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Okay. So I can look at this guy. I can be like, so here is dot step, right? It, the, a dot is is the first is the first is the first character you need in the spice, in the spice directive. It lets it know what's going on. So we can read all these examples. Um, or the one we really want to pay attention to is going to be this one. Actually, sorry, uh, one down. And let's just say the syntax for this guy, right? We say dot step, step a parameter. I named that parameter R. I, na I named that parameter R load. And in this case, what they did is they said, well, I I'm going to I'm just going to give you a list. I want to go five, ten, and fifteen. That's one way to do it. My perf my preferred way is to go see if they have it in here. And that definitely will work. Um, I'll show you something a little different though. I can hit S for spice directive and hit dot step parameter. I call my parameter R. 
So the syntax I'm going to use is I'm going to have stop, start, stop, increment. So I'm going to go from 1K to 10K, and I'm going to go <coughs> increments of, say, 2K. Or let's go 1K. So I'm going to take this guy, and I just got to plop it down somewhere on my schematic. It doesn't really matter where. And let's try to run this guy again. So I'm going to look at my output. Bam, and if you notice now, there's a lot of different, different, different lines in the screen. And one thing that I've searched for for a long time, but that I, I haven't found a good LT Spice legend. But I will show you one way to figure out what all these lines mean. So, as a first start, as the first thing we can count them and we can be like, okay, there's, there should be, you know, 10 of them, right? So we went from one to 10 in, in, in steps of one. And if we, if we knew what we were doing, if we knew what circuits were, we could really, we could figure it out and know that maybe the green was the first one. But maybe our circuit's a little more complicated and we need to figure out what's, we want to figure out what's going on. So let's go to, where are you? Simulate control panel. And this guy has a lot of fun stuff in it. Um, I'd encourage you to poke around and, uh, and figure out what's going on. But I kind of want to know something about my waveforms. And I want to know what all of these colors mean. So let's click on, click on my color scheme. So what it'll, what it'll tell you is this is the order of your simulation by color. We have this green color, we have blue, red, we have, we call it teal, pink, gray. So if you look at it, you know, this guy is V1, V2, V3. Uh, and Spice is a little annoying by this fact. LT Spice is a little annoying where it, where it doesn't give you a proper legend on, on the schematic. Um, you just kind of, you, but it, the nice thing about this, though, is it does give you the ability to independently change any of your colors, change your background. You can make it exactly what you like. By default, I usually use a different color background um, that I like better. Uh, but there you go. So I, I could use this for a lot of things. Where if you know if I, if I had if I wanted if I just want to say well, by orders of magnitude maybe I want to go from one to one meg. What happens with these resistors in the circuit? Or I can apply the same thing to a voltage source. So all right. So let's try to do something a little more tricky. If you guys have ever seen. Uh, if you guys have been into uh, engineering ESA's 245 yet, <coughs> one of the things that you see in those textbooks is that you'll see these these you'll see these lists of curves for BJTs, and they'll be all and they'll be like a bunch of them on, on, on the on the on the list, and you have you know you have to look at them and say, well, if I increase the base current, what happens? I can we can actually do something like that with the transistor. Now, for all you people who really are against having things that are unrealistic, I ask you to bear with me for a second. But what we're going to do is we're going to actually we're going to actually create that guy. I'm going to show you how. So I'm going to drag this guy, my ground down a little bit, and I hit, and this was drag instead of move. So I can just extend my line, and I'm going to connect it here. So this guy, and if I want to rename some of my voltage sources or my resistors or anything, I can right click in this V2 label, and I'm going to label this V C E for collector to emitter. And then I'm going to get rid of these guys. And I want a current source this time. So, and of course we need ground. And I'm going to say this is current going into the base. This is just going to, I'm just going to give it some nominal value of, you know, 10 milliamps. And this is 15 volts again. So if I were, and if you notice, since I got rid of R, I can delete this guy again by clicking F5. And let's just do a quick simulation to make sure nothing's broken at the moment. Right, so things are going on, but as, as it stands, this circuit is not very useful for transient analysis. 
So let's look and let's look. And I right clicked on my transit simulation, and let's just say I want to do a DC sweep, and this is what's going to be useful for us. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sweep my two sources. I'm going to go BC. I'm going to go linear. I'm going to go from zero to ten volts by a volt. And I'm going from some standard thing that you see in textbooks, so it'll look the same. And for the second one, let's go my current source, and let's go uh, microamp to 10 at 1. So if you notice, right, we have our, our netless command down here again. We have our first source, we have start, stop, increment. We have our second source, and start, stop, so let's run this guy and see what happens. And let me get rid of this guy. And we are going to want to simulate current through the collector. So if I look at this guy, this is on the x-axis is my first voltage, my first source sweep. On the y-axis is my second source sweep. And if I and now, and what I'm actually plotting are, actually uh, I misspoke. Um, on the y-axis is what I chose to plot, so the collector current. And each one, of, and each one of these lines represents a different current of my current source. So that was my, that was my second parameter. Right? So I started at one microamp and went to 10. So if you notice, um, no, and of course these are a little boxy because I didn't give a lot. I didn't have. A, I don't have a lot of resolution right now because normally you'd expect nice smooth curves right here. But if you notice, this guy looks very similar to what happens in your, in, in your textbooks. So if you ever have to, you know, get a family of curves for a for a component, you can do it in this manner. You you might have to put a little more work on it, into it to make sure to make sure that all, all of your parameters are you know are to specification. But this is the basics of how you do a, a two-source uh, voltage sweep in LT Spice. Okay, so let's go back to this guy real fast. But let's say, well, you know, I wanted to do it for my BJT. I don't want to do it for the standard one in LT Spice because you know that's not very exciting. So what we can do is we can import other we can import other manufacturers. Spice models. Uh, you, a lot of times you can go to their websites and request a spice model. You can sometimes they'll be in the data sheets. I uh, you, you might have to hunt around for it a little bit though. So there are a few different ways to to import someone else's spice model into into yours. And the first one is that we can get get it and just plop it down on our schematic. So let me look in real quick. model for the NPN. Okay, so I looked up a spice model, and don't worry about reading this at the moment, a spice model for a certain 2N222A by Fairchild. So what I can do is, once I copy this guy, the first thing I can do is, once I'm back in LT Spice, I can drop it right on my schematic. And if LT Spice wants to play nice. So I can open up a spice a a spice directive, and I can copy and paste that guy right in there. But if you notice, this is not too useful. I have to add I have to add a few things to the front of this. The first one is I have to say dot model, and then I have to give it a name. I'm going to call this guy two n two 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 b just for kicks and giggles. So now what I can do is I can say, I can look at my, I can look at my NPN and I can say, well, I, it's called Q1, but the model is looking for, it's going into LT, LT Spice's libraries and it's saying, fetch the standard to uh, NPN. 
but I want to change that guy, and I'm going to say fetch 2n 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, b. Yeah. And I can simulate. And so what that'll do, that'll simulate for my specific BJT. And if you'll notice, our collector currents are a different order of magnitude because this guy is a different transistor. So you'll notice that between the two, between different BJTs, there's all huge process variables. A lot, some of them are small. Are meant for small signal amplification. Although others are meant for power. So a lot of times, be very careful. LT spices defaults generally are the power components. If you want something that is signal, you'll generally want to find something not the default. So what I just did there is I I added this guy in and I said so I can have a 2N, 222, two, two, whatever, whatever I decide to call it, EJT. So I kind of don't like a lot of stuff scrolled out across my schematic. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, we're going to pretty it up for, for a second. So I'm going to right click on this guy and I say, let's find, let's put these on new lines. And we say type control M, just there a new line. Control M. And because I really want to be able to read all of these. Because if you notice in the model, there's a lot of stuff going on, right? There's a lot of different parameters we can specify for our BJT. So let's try to run this again and see what happens. Unknown spice device type. Well, that's weird because it just ran, right? It just ran before I put the spaces in. So something has to be a little different. It doesn't like these new line characters. So to find out what's going on, we're going to go to actually where our spice models are stored to see if we can find a difference. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into my computer. We're going to go C drive, program files. We're going to search L, so linear tech preparation. And under there, we have LT spice. And I want to go into the libraries. And I want to go into the components. So if you look at this guy, it says what these guys are, these are the libraries for all, for all the standard parts you have in Spice. So this guy says standard LT Spice bipolar, which is what we want. And we're going to open it up, and it's going to open it up in Spice. And if you notice, these are all the models that Spice has stored. So we say, oh, look at that. Spice has these little plus symbols which is what it wants at the beginning of a new line. So let's put that in there. Let's right click on there, I'm going to put a plus, plus, a plus, and now it runs, and it's happy. But let's go a little further, we're like, well, since I already have all those models in my library, I don't want to look at this at all. You know, this is kind of ugly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into Spice, and I usually create a new section that says custom models, and then we're going to, you know, end our custom models. And I'm going to paste that model in there. So once I save, I can go into Spice. I can delete that guy and simulate it, and it still works. So the other, the other thing that we can do with, with, importing, with importing our uh, custom models is that I can dump it right in my Spice library, and therefore anyone who has that, that, that Spice library can use my part there. So if I want to use it again and not just in this schematic, I have that ability. So I can, I can reuse parts and I can make custom parts and change components around. All right, does anybody have any questions on that guy? Nope. Okay, so just as a disclaimer, as we, as, as we, as we wrap up, I mentioned it beforehand, um, whenever you use Spice, not just LT Spice in, in general, Please don't rely on it to think for you. Um, a lot, a lot of people is there that that you know that are old circuits gurus are very against spice because they say that you should know what's going on, right? You should understand circuits. 
So SPICE is a tool that aids you, that aids and helps you understand what's going on. It does something for you. So with that, I hope you guys have now a basic understanding of how to use LT SPICE. I'll put up some of the um, schematics that I created through this talk in a, in a link to a, another LT SPICE tutorial too with this video, I believe it's going on YouTube. So anyone who wasn't here can reference it again or if you Remember something I said and couldn't remember, you know, remember that I said something and couldn't remember how to do it. You can always go to the YouTube channel from uh, IEEE and look at it again. Cool. Any questions before we uh, cut off the video? Nope. If you think of any more, feel free to come up afterwards or email me.